Should we use technology in the language classroom? I've presented in 55 countries around the world and there's no doubt that this is the question that I'm asked the most. My answer to this question is really that we've got to be careful. I think there are specific moments when the use of technology can really be justified. But we've got to remember too that our currency is language teaching and we have to put that at the centre of any decisions we make about any ideas, any methodologies, any approaches, any activities that we do in the classroom. In this video, I'm going to try to explain to you A, why I'm a bit sceptical about the use of too much technology in the class and B, I'm going to be very specific about some of the times when you would use technology. I really believe if you watch this video, it's going to help you a lot. What I'm also going to do is through the video, as I mention a few technologies that I do think are useful, I will give you videos that you can click on and access. There's also the chapters of this video, so you can jump to any part of the video if you want to. I really hope you're going to find this video useful. It should give you a really solid basis on which to base your decisions about the use of technology. And one final thing before we start, I'm really talking about classrooms that are fairly well resourced. I'm really talking about classrooms in a Western context. I do appreciate, of course, that in very low resourced areas, you may use a lot more technology because you may need access to the audio, to the pictures, etc. And of course, I'm not talking about online teaching because in online teaching, you really have no choice but to use technology. I'm talking about mainstream Western contexts, fairly well resourced schools where you've got access to at least some technology, books, a whiteboard, etc. Really hope you've liked the video. Really hope you like the video. Um, find the video useful. Love for you to comment. I'm going to be very interested in the comments that you leave. Please like the video if you can. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Let's get started. I believe there's a lot of really creative ideas in language teaching that have nothing to do with digital technology and that we should learn about before we really start to spend a lot of time looking at these technological tools. In other words, there's already loads of very creative and very interesting and very stimulating materials and ideas around that we can access. Now, I started teaching more than 30 years ago. I remember making use of the books of Jill Hatfield, Charlie Hatfield, Peter Watkin Jones. I remember use, making great use of the books that Mario Rinvalucri wrote with lots of teaching ideas. Now, when I switched over to Spanish, I found that there were similar books in Spanish with lots of teaching ideas. What I'm saying is if I was going to spend my time trying to make my lessons more interesting, I think I would still spend a large majority of it looking at those extra materials that were available that can build around a course and also what the book itself has to offer because often books themselves have photocopyable materials at the back. I remember, for example, Inside Out, um, English File. Many of the books these days have photocopyable materials that we can make use of. Lots of additional ideas in the teachers books and that is where I'd look first rather than spend my time looking at technologies and as a kind of just as a little story related to that I two years ago or three years ago did a course in Poland learning Polish and I we didn't use any technology in the class apart from watch a few YouTube videos and also be introduced to the platform that connected to the book and I'll talk about that later but our teacher did loads of games, loads of group work, loads of pair work, loads of card games, lots of things going up to the board and writing on the board and sticking things on the wall. And I loved it. And there was really hardly any use of technology in the class. So my advice to you would be focus on loads of the creative materials that are available in language teaching that can really make our lessons interesting before necessarily you start to focus on technology. Okay, so let me try to explain really carefully now what the exceptions are. I don't want you to think that I'm not 
uh, suggesting that technology can be used in the class. I think it has got a role, but I think we've got to be really careful. The first thing I want to say is I'm not really naturally that uh, interested in technology. I'm not the type of person that buys the latest gadgets or has computer games, etc. My telephone's quite old, so is my computer, etc. What interested me about technology was the fact that it could really revolutionize both the homework that I could set my students, but also for my own language learning, the types of activities I could do outside of the classroom as well. So in my own language learning, I also use technology a lot outside the class. So what I was interested in was how it would revolutionize the way I could set homework for my students to do. Suddenly I could get them to collaborate, so I could get them perhaps to work on a Padlet and collaborate and have a discussion after the lesson or maybe even record themselves and I've used Padlet a lot for that. In fact, Padlet's a great tool, particularly for the part outside of the lesson. Uh, if you don't know Padlet, I'll put a link on the screen now. It's one of the most popular technologies that teachers work with because it offers so many options. So this whole idea of changing, transforming almost what we can get our students to do outside of the lesson. In the past when I was teaching my first job in Crete, you know, I could ask my students to do some homework, maybe from the workbook, maybe I could give them some vocabulary to study, I might ask them to read something, maybe an article in the course book, or maybe even a reader. But really, I was quite limited in the types of activities that I could do for homework. Now I can do all sorts of things, getting the students to study on their own, watch YouTube videos on their own, listen to podcasts, do activities to practice grammar, record themselves speaking, which is something I've done a lot of work on. So that was for me the biggest thing about technology, not in the class, but really what we can do with technology to extend the lesson. And it almost changes the way that we see a lesson because really now a lesson becomes the part in the lesson and the part at home. And obviously we've seen with the flipped classroom that that can be work two ways. Maybe you start in the lesson and then the homework uh, is that what you're building into, but you can also work the other way where the students do some homework in preparation for the lesson. But it's technology that's playing a really big impact on that. So that would definitely be, for me, one of the areas where I would definitely focus on the use of technology and say, yeah, it's a really good idea. So my second point would be that I do introduce technologies into the classroom that are going to impact on what my students can do in terms of their own autonomous learning. So in the past, quite a few teachers used to come in and observe me teaching. And one of the comments that they would make is you spend quite a lot of time showing students, for example, how to use Quizlet or how to use Google Translate or how to work with YouTube. Now, for example, Quizlet, there's so many interesting things that you can do with Quizlet. And if we can help our students to use Quizlet more effectively, then that's going to have an impact on what they do outside of the classroom because maybe they'll use Quizlet to study vocabulary. So in that case, with a view to what the students might do outside of the lesson, how it might develop their autonomy, I will introduce technologies into the classroom. So for example, if you if you don't know about some of the extra things that you can do with Quizlet and how you can super quick make uh, cards in Quizlet, I'm putting a video on the screen now that will take you through how you can uh, make cards in Quizlet and show your students how to do this. Another example would be YouTube. YouTube's an amazing tool for language learners. They can search for videos that have got subtitles. They can slow down the speed of the video. They can play specific parts. They can search for videos that are only four minutes long. There's so much material. They can create playlists. They can subscribe to channels. Many teachers don't know about these things and many students don't know about them either. So again, I would train my students in using YouTube effectively because it can have a massive impact on how they can study autonomously on their own. Now, if you don't know anything about YouTube and you are interested, I've got a very popular video that I'm putting on the screen now that will take you through some of the ways that we can use YouTube and show our students some of the things that they can do to help them with uh, studying on their own. 
Just a super quick break from the video. If you do like what you see and you like the free the videos, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free content. You can look at some of the menu content along the top here or on the front page there's loads of videos for language teachers. Uh, also, if you want to follow my work, the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. I often run free webinars sponsored by some of the big software companies. Um, so you can sign up, you get the latest videos, the webinars, the online courses, and of course the blog post. The blog post you can always find on the front page. I write a regular blog for Express Publishing. And of course, if you want to, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, finally, just to say you can contact me from this website as well. Thank you very much. Let's jump back now to the video. The third point, of course, is that there are times in the class when you want to add uh, another dimension to the lesson and that can be of course brought about by making use of technology for example video is a great stimulus in the lesson great way of, way of modeling uh, language a great way of contextualizing activities and acti and contextualizing language a great way of starting a discussion there are all sorts of reasons why you might use YouTube videos there are all sorts of reasons why at certain points you might say okay I need to add a, a bit of a dynamic it might be edutainment so you might just want to have a bit of a fun lesson maybe it's the end of a course maybe it's um, perhaps um, you know at the end of term or maybe for example it's an, a quick warmer activity that includes technology I'm not saying that technology can't play a role but we've got to be really careful because sometimes setting up these activities can take a long time they don't become warmers they become activities that take 30 or 40 minutes to do in the lesson so we've got to be careful when we do these things. So of course I do understand that sometimes technology really can add another dimension to the lesson. But I'm very careful about that because I'm aware that there are lots of games and activities that don't include technology, that don't include digital technology, that can be just as effective and as just as much fun in the class. So I suppose one of the most popular would be Kahoot. Uh, Kahoot's really nice as a kind of activity perhaps to do at the end of a lesson or perhaps at the end of term or as a revision activity for the end of a unit. Um, and it can be real fun. Um, and it does require, though, that the students have technology themselves in the classroom. Either they work in groups and there's a telephone but, or a smartphone between them or perhaps a device, a computer, etc. So... There are alternatives to Kahoot. One of them is Bamboozle. Bamboozle also can create a kind of gaming element in the classroom. But I like Bamboozle because it's kind of a hybrid between a technology and a non-technology. And it only really requires the teacher to have a computer. So if you don't know how to use Bamboozle, you might want to watch the video that's on the screen now. Uh, it's an interesting alternative to Kahoot, not quite as complicated. And the students themselves don't need technology they can work in groups and discuss uh, the questions that are on on the screen another technology that can work really well uh, if you want to add a kind of gaming element is Socrative again it's an interesting alternative to Kahoot and one that's very very popular uh, my video on Socrative is very popular and it's nice because it's like a race and again if you're interested in that technology I'll put a video on the screen now that you can link to so I have suggested that there are moments in the classroom when you might decide to use technology because you want to put some energy some motivation into the lesson but you've got to be really careful with that number one you can easily overdo the edutainment so doing too many activities that are a bit of fun but really aren't I haven't really got a lot of pedagogical value so be careful yes there is a role for motivation and energy in the classroom of course there is but be careful how often you do that make sure that really most of the activities that you're doing in your lessons are targeted towards language learning and not just a bit of fun the other thing to keep in mind is as well that whenever you bring a technology into a class whenever you decide to do a kahoot a Socr socrative a bamboozle some collaborative activity you've probably got to take something out of your lesson because you've only got a limited amount of time. So what are you taking out of the class to bring that technology in so that you can do that particular activity? Is what you're taking out of the lesson 
as good as what you're bringing into the lesson. You've really got to consider that because you've got a limited amount of time in the classroom. And thirdly, how does that technology or that particular activity fit in to the overall syllabus of the course? Most people are working from a book, and so you've really got to think carefully about the moments when you bring in technology into a lesson. Does that fit in well with the book? Does it fit in well with the syllabus, uh, with the content of the book? Now, there's definitely a time for bringing technologies in. I'm not saying that sometimes the book doesn't lack in something and you want to bring something in additional, but think it through very carefully. And obviously there is one moment when you're definitely going to use technology and that is if you've asked the students to do an activity for homework like do a Padlet or perhaps work on a Google Doc together or perhaps they've done some kind of activity where they've co collaborated like in Wakelet. Now in the classroom you might want to open that Padlet up or open up the Google Doc and look at what the students have written or maybe get them to look at it and discuss it. So often you will use technologies in the class not to actually do an activity but rather to look at what the students did for homework and you do want to kind of link the two parts of the lesson together. So that is definitely an instant when I use technology in the classroom. Often as a kind of springboard to the class. So the students have done a collaborative activity for homework, perhaps on Padlet, and I say, right, let's open up the Padlet, I'm gonna project it on the screen, I'm gonna get you to go into groups now and choose your favorite contribution, for example, or I want you to choose your first favorite three contributions. So types of activities where I'm really working with the content that the students produced at home, or maybe even an example where they've done a recording, they've all done audio recordings, and then in the class I say, right, I'm gonna play one or two of the best examples. So again, I am using technology, but really what I'm doing is kind of focusing on the homework that was done and the activities that the students were expected to do at home. Really hope that video was useful. As I've said, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com, loads more free videos. If you're looking for webinars, and often they're free, my online courses, the latest videos, as well as the blog post, then you can sign up to my newsletter. There's about 10,000 people signed up to that currently. Uh, you can also from here access my blog, which is always at the bottom of the screen on the front page. If you want to contact me about me doing perhaps some training with your school or your institution or your university, uh, you can contact me from the website. And of course, you can also join me on my YouTube channel. I'm going to put a few more videos on the screen now that you might find really interesting connected with teaching and technology.